Greetings folks, this is my Talon GT INAV setup. I have uh, an F405 wing flight control board, a Runcam Sparrow 16.9 FPV camera. Now I must stress I'm not an INAV expert, I'm just a user. There's a lot I don't know about it, I don't really know how to trim and tune, uh, how to adjust any of the PIDs or PIFs or anything like that. So far with all my models I've just set up the basics and they've worked pretty well without needing too much adjustment. The Talon GT might be a little bit different because there's no decent preset for it. The one in iNav 2.1.4 is for the Mini Talon and this one is a lot more agile and faster so I'm pretty sure it needs some different tuning but we'll get to that. What I've found so far mucking around with iNav is that I think the control horns are too short on all the control surfaces giving you way too much control and it's kind of hard to adjust that mechanically. Ideally I would put double length control horns on all of the control surfaces and that'd make it a lot easier. The thing is you have way too much control when you switch into manual mode if you're using 100% throws. Anyway, uh, I'll show you what we've done with that in the configurator. <coughs> Here's the camera for the cable running back to the flight control board. Flight control board here. And what I've done is built a little uh, sort of a shelf for the board to sit on and slide into and the board is uh, double sided taped onto a piece of cork last so I can actually pull that out if I want to jam it back in there into position that holds it nice and securely GPS is just sitting up here uh, it's a round one so it doesn't really fit into that little square um, I'll, I'll eventually get a little square one or chop out some foam to seat it in a bit nicer ESC coming in there that is S bus coming from going out into the wing out to here uh, X6R FR Sky receiver there. Just have the antennas taped flat on the bottom of the wing for the moment. Uh, may not be the longest range, but uh, I don't really need it for long range anyway. And the left aileron going into one, uh, right aileron going into two, left elevon or whatever you want to call it going into three, right elevon going into four. So they're all the servo connections. Uh, we have the camera here going into the camera input and the video transmitter coming from out there I have that just tucked underneath there Eshin TS5823L you can read it 200 milliwatt 5.8 gigahertz just sort of stock standard uh, with a little antenna sitting underneath there the idea was to keep it as clean and efficient as possible so everything's on the bottom of the wing rather than the top of the wing I, I kind of figured that that will give it a clearer line of sight anyway. I really prefer longer control horns on here so that you don't have to use reduced rates in your transmitter or in INAV. I'll show you what I've done later on to fix that anyway. Plug it in. Make sure we've got the right driver. USB modem, blah 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 blah. There we go, we're connected now. So this is firmware 2.1.0 and I have configurator 2.1.4. All right, so let's step through it. Calibrate your accelerometer. I'm not going to show you how to do that. Mix it. Don't do it. worry about that yet. Presets? No, not yet. Uh, so you need to set up your serial receiver on UART2 and GPS on UART4. And mine works fine at 115 200. Save and reboot. So you need to enable motor and servo output and don't spin the motor when armed. I've changed the minimum throttle and maximum throttle to 1000 and 2000. For this model I found I needed plus 5 pitch degrees to get it to fly level in uh, horizon and angle mode and I did that by well I initially had it at 3 degrees then I went out and flew it found that it was still dipping in angle mode so then I increased it to 5 degrees and now it's flying nice and level serial base receiver and S bus is what I'm using and you do need to turn on GPS uh, before that's going to hold you need to you need to make sure that you've selected GPS here on UART 4 saved and reboot before that is going to show up and make it selectable here. 
if you have digital servos, you change that to 330 for higher um, resolution. But I think mine on the Talon GT are only analog servos. I'm not too sure, but uh, and this setting will work for both. Battery voltage monitoring, yes. Current sensor, yes. My current reading isn't working so well at the moment. Um, so I'm making around with the scaling to see if that's going to fix it. But yeah, I'll just leave that as default and see if it works to start off with. Other features, yes, I'm using the OSD. Permanently enable air mode. Don't need anything else there for the moment. Save and reboot. Okay, now back to the mixer. Only one motor, so I deleted the second motor there. And the preset, I chose Airplane, VTAL, Mini Talon and similar. And then Load and Apply, and this is the mixing that we get. And that sort of slots in the VTAL mixing, which is these uh, Servo 4 and 5. As I said, I'm not an expert at INAV, so uh, possibly you could play with these values to get nicer performance, but uh, it's not something I've done yet. But yeah, that slots in the VTAL mixing there, and these are the ailerons here. Uh, it doesn't really reflect the board. Servo output 1 is where I put the left aileron in, 2 is the right aileron, 3 is the left elevon, whatever you want to call it, and 4 is the right elevon. And then save and reboot. I have done an auto trim it looks like maybe that has uh, been messing around with the trims a bit for me, so I might put them back to zero, back to uh, 1500 actually. That might be why it's wandering a little bit. Interesting. Fail safe, I want it to return to home. Save and reboot. PID controller, now this is where you can reduce the manual rates rather than doing it in your transmitter, it's better to do it here. They were at up at 100 and I had way, way too much control. So much control that it was scary. So I've dropped that back to, I've flown it, I dropped it back to 70 and flew it with that, which you'll see in the footage. After that, I've dropped it back to 50 and I'll try it again. Maximum roll angle 60 and maximum pitch angle 60. And I've done that in the CLI commands that are recommended in the fixed wing wiki on INAV. So um, I think that'll do the same thing. Nothing else I know much about there and save that. Advanced tuning, um, okay, what are we doing here? Nothing I changed there. Use GPS data for velocity calculation. Yes, I'm doing that. Cruise throttle 1400, you can adjust that if you are if you need more throttle when you're in the sort of cruising modes. Uh, that's where you change it there. Again, I've changed the minimum throttle to 1000, maximum to 2000. I don't know if I really need to do that. Increase the bank angle from... 20 to 40, that just gives you uh, more bank if you need it. My loiter radius, I like at 40 instead of 50, just to get a tighter radius. Importantly, uh, I change it to fixed for return to home, so fixed altitude, and I set that at 50 metres. It's initially at 10 metres, which is way too low, so I usually have mine at 50 metres. That seems to work for me. Uh, decide whether you want it to climb first or, or not. I prefer it to turn before climbing. And you need to change that from always to never. You never want it to land on a return to home, as far as I know. The multi-rotor settings there, so we don't need that. That's it on that page. Save and reboot. Receiver, you've got to make sure all of these, uh, one, two, three, four, first four channels go increase when you go up and to the right with the, all the sticks. Uh, put in your RSSI channel here if you're going to have it. You can change the manual expo here. Modes, arming on channel 5, angle and horizon on channel 6 and you assign switches in your transmitter to those channels and I have alt hold and position hold on another switch. In the middle position it uh, holds altitude and just flies in a straight line hopefully. In the down position of the switch you get alt hold and position hold which is a loiter mode. I think you can do that with nav cruise which holds the direction as well. I haven't really played with that one yet. On another switch I have manual in the middle position and return to home on the down position. Then we sort of get out of trouble switch. Auto trim and auto tune on another switch. 
and I have an alternate um, OSD on this switch as well. One that just hides the distance to home if I'm recording for YouTube and I don't want to share how far I, I'm f away I'm flying for obvious reasons, save that. Uh, adjustments, never gone into that one here. The servos, uh, you can reverse the servos if your control surfaces are moving in the wrong direction. Satellites, uh, if your satellite's connected properly, you'll these total messages will be counting up and eventually you'll acquire some satellites and it'll give you a position on the map there as long as you've got internet access. Mission control, I've never done that because I'm on a Mac which is, uh, doesn't really support mission control as much. Motors, OSD, this is my OSD, I have fly time, battery voltage, milliamp hours, satellites, uh, satellite accuracy, that number gets lower the more satellites you you acquire horizontal distance precision or something like that altitude distance to home current and speed and this is 3d speed so if you're in a dive that'll increase I've also got uh, roll angle and pitch angle just because I felt like watching them uh, flight mode system messages uh, dist direction to home and the, the variograph here that tells you whether you're climbing or descending save that and down the bottom, CLI, and I always insert these commands, uh, which is just recommended in the fixed wing wiki, and I don't really know if you still need to do that. It seems to work anyway. So that's it for the setup. Uh, let's go out and have a fly now and um, do some tweaking in the field. All right, let's see how it all works. I have manual rates down on 70%, 70 expo. Let's see how it goes. All right, so... We're right to go. Start off in that direction. Acro mode is pretty good. Liking that. Manual mode wants to go nose down. How is it otherwise? Good, much better. Still quite a lot of control. I could drop that down, but I definitely need to. Trim the other ones up a little bit. Those trees over there are rather annoying. And that was a bit rough. I can do, of course, an auto trim, but I'd rather do it with elevator trim. <laughs> Manual now. That's better. Still a bit too much. Angle mode. That's good. Horizon mode's nice. Flying much better now. It's turning. It's turning left all the time. Why is it doing that? Angle. Uh, horizon mode's nice though. Altitude hold. That looks like it's working well. Definitely wants to turn left all the time for some reason. Altitude hold. Loiter. Loiter. That's good. Altitude hold. 
turn to launch. It's all working well, very good. Happy with it now. Got someone flying an Inspire out in the middle of the field, unfortunately, so that's going to curtail further investigations, really. I'd like to do an auto tune, uh, but I can't really while he's there. So I'm finding it so fast, <laughs> I need a bigger area, really, to test it out. Uh, those trees over there and that and the road over there I can go out in the middle but someone else is there at the moment even so need a big area to test it out anyway I'll go through the settings and record it on DVR that's lovely in acro mode very nice to fly Nice rudder turn. Need to use full stick movements to to have it work, but um, nothing wrong with that. Okay, manual mode. And you've got full control. Probably a bit too much. I think I'd drop that back to. What have we got it on? I might have it on 70, or yeah, could even drop it back to 50. Alright, back in acro mode, horizon mode, very nice, oh, sorry that was angle mode, now we're in horizon mode, that's a bit radical. That's working well, could be climbing a little bit maybe. Angle mode. Sorry, people walking around everywhere that I can't see. Uh, altitude. altitude hold. Working nicely. Loiter mode. Should circle around there. That's a nice mode. Working well. I've put the bank angle at 40 degrees and radius at four, uh, loiter radius at 40 degrees too. Return to home. And here it comes back home. So everything's working well. Banking around and turning. There, there we go. Very nice. I tend not to use auto launch. Uh, I prefer hand launching. You need less of a throw. Very good. So it's fast, needs a lot of area for testing. I've got too many obstacles where I am here. Really need to go out in the middle, but someone else is there. Uh, I still want to do an auto tune. Auto trim, I'd rather trim the push rods to do that. My board alignment seems right in horizon and angle modes with plus five pitch angle very good a little bit more tweaking to get it perfect but um, it's all working well thanks for watching